This video is going to be a bit different than others. You're warned. Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my shop. This last week was a fun one for me. I had a friend swing by, a good friend from college, Luke Milkey. Uh, he has a, a videography firm um, called uh, Fusion Video, and it does some really cool things over there. But he said, hey, I'd love to actually come and shoot you making something. It'd be kind of fun to do that. And I'm like, hey, it'd be a lot of fun to actually not have to shoot something, and you can just do it, and I'll make the product, and we're going to have some fun. So we decided to uh, take a hunk of firewood and turn it into a box. Um, just a scrap of firewood from out in my firewood pile, and uh, in a matter of, I think it was like, uh, what, uh, two and a half, three hours worth of work, we have a box out of a piece of firewood. And so this is a really fun project, very simple build, with uh, just some rabbits holding it together. Doesn't take that long, throw some carving on it, and uh, yeah, have a lot of fun. Now, uh, he shot all the footage for this, and there'll be a couple other videos coming out, but I want to do a video that's more or less a how-to. So this is going to look a little bit different than my normal how-to videos, because um, it's very artistically shot and, and very, well, hand tools in slow motion is such a turn-on. <laughs> <laughs> but, but it should be kind of fun. Uh, there isn't as much audio in the, the sound of it because of the, uh, the recording that we'll be doing in the future. Uh, but I'll be actually going through how do you take a block of firewood and in a few hours turn it into a box. A very simple process, but uh, very rewarding and a lot of fun. So let's take a look at that. Now this project starts at one of my all-time favorite places to start a project. The woodpile. And I have a decent collection of firewood. Um, a lot of it is white oak, uh, surprise, surprise. A lot of it is also uh, maple or box elder. And I'm looking for the piece that has a nice straight grain. Um, riven wood is always fantastic for this because you can get a really stable, clean piece. And uh, it's, it's really good wood for a project. If you can pull a project out of that size of a piece of wood, you are good to go. So we're gonna take it back to the shop and the first thing I need to do is get a good flat surface on this. Once you have one solid flat surface, then you can measure everything off of that. And what I like to do is flatten down one side and then flatten down another side 90 degrees to it so that I have two reference edges I can mark everything off of. I'm gonna start with a scrub plane and uh, clean off the surface and try and get it down to flat. No twist, no bow, no curve in it, and I can use winding sticks to judge if it is flat and true and make sure that everything is the way it wants to be. Once I have the surface relatively flat with the scrub plane, then I can come in with a uh, regular uh, bench plane and smooth it out. And uh, this gets rid of all the marks from the scrub plane and then will fix any small problems that I had. Once I have it smooth, then I can come back in and check it again. And uh, boy, I love this with the camera work on this, the, uh, seeing these dust particles coming off. Oh, just happiness. <laughs> but let's go back and actually check this thing. You can use a winding stick as your straight edge as well as checking it for twist. And you can see if there's any bit of wind in there. Being such a small piece, you can get a really good idea and get it really close to perfect. Next thing I want to do is mark out. I'm going to be basically cutting five boards out of this, a quarter inch wide by the thickness and width of the, the log that I have. So I'm going to use my marking gauge to put in all of the marks a quarter inch apart. So I'm going to be making five cuts parallel to each other down this board. And to make those cuts, I love using my Rebo style frame saw. I could come at this with a hand saw. It wouldn't take that much longer. Uh, but the frame saw is just that much more fun and easy to use, and you can just watch the dust coming out of it. It is a very, very enjoyable saw to, me, to play with. Um, it, it's a bit of a trick to learn how to track down the lines. Some people like to use a kerfing saw to create a kerf for the saw to fall, follow in. I'm not as big of a fan of that. Uh, I just like to freehand and follow the line. It really isn't that big of a problem once you get used to it and you learn how to do it. And uh, I, I love this angle where you can see all the sawdust coming out. Each stroke is taking about a quarter inch down this. It's about two and a half inches thick of white oak. So it's not a, uh, not a simple cut, but it goes fairly quickly, about uh, what, 15 to 20 seconds down each cut in, in full speed. But in this half speed, it's just, uh, it's fun. <laughs> so once we get all of these uh, cut down, you can see all the cuts parallel to each other. We can take them over to the bench and cut off the excess. So now I have four boards that are about a quarter inch, they're a little thicker than a quarter inch, uh, by whatever the width of that uh, log is I had. Now I need to go through and smooth out one side of all the boards. Once I have one side smoothed out, I can mark on the edge with a marking gauge 
how thick I want them to be and bring all the boards down to the same thickness. In this case, it was right out about a quarter inch. And so playing back and forth, we can find out what the thinnest piece is and then bring them all down to whatever that thinnest angle is. And you'll have a really nice board. I want to take them over to the shooting board then and clean up the ends. And now I know that these are square and true and flat and all about the same thickness and ready to go. Next, I want to cut off um, a bit on the end that is the same length as it is wide. This will become the ends of the box. And the other four pieces will then be the bottom, top, and sides of the box. And that way, you can kind of get an idea of how this is all going to go together. We're going to put it together with rabbits. And rather than using a rabbit plane, I'm going to use a Stanley 55. Um, it's just a fun plane to use, and I have a, about a half inch blade in there so I can set it to create a rabbit about the thickness of the boards um, so that there'll be an edge for it to go along. Once I cut the rabbit um, on all four sides of the end and two sides of each of the bottom and top, uh, then I can come through and clean them out with a chisel and I'll be occasionally checking them to make sure everything's fitting nicely and everything's kind of squeezing together. Um, a chisel allows you to come in and really clean up the edges and make everything true and uh, and fit tightly. The, the, the goal of the matter is to make everything is not cut out anything you don't have to until the absolute last possible moment. And that way you know you can sneak up on the line and get as true to it as possible. After cutting through all those and getting the fit in right, making sure that everything's the way I want it to be, then we're going to start gluing it together. For this I'm going to be using 2P10. I'm going to start by using a, a fast uh, thin glue here and just hitting it with some activator and then I'll come back in with a gel and let that soak in and the gel is what will hold it together the activator is just the, the nice part. Now it's time for the fun part the carving and uh, I get to pick out my chisels but you know rolling that chisel out is just too much fun to do once so let's uh, let's do it again in slow motion. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay, now we need to pick out a V-tool chisel and then a, uh, a skew chisel and then there's a couple other little ones I'll use, but those are the two main ones. I'll print off a pattern. Um, I just go into Google Images, find a pattern that I like, and I'll lay it out on there. I'll use a glue stick to adhere it down. That glue comes off very easily. And then we'll go about actually uh, sharpening the chisels. And I'll leave this strop on the bench and sharpen every five or six minutes worth of carving. This really is a very easy process. Just follow the line. If you can follow a line with a pencil, you can do this surface carving. Just slide the chisel in, follow along the line, stop where you need to stop. I'm using a small mallet to tap it in rather than just pushing with hand. Uh, with the hand, if you, haven't, if you don't have the skill for it, you're going to push past the line. Whereas with a small mallet, you can just slowly tap it in place and get a lot of control with that tiny little mallet. Just tapping away on it and slowly working out. This piece probably did, what, about 15-20 uh, minutes or so to, to carve the top on this. Really didn't take that much time and anyone with 5-10 to 10 minutes worth of practice can pick up this carving without any problem at all. And I, I say that with confidence because I've taught um, kids and teens to do this. And if you can hold the chisel and follow a line with a pencil, you can do the same thing. To get rid of the pattern, I'm just going to grab a card scraper and scrape off the pattern. And this is the, the first step in the finishing then, is uh, cleaning up the wood. It gets rid of any of the burrs and little pieces sticking up and uh, removes the pattern very quickly. And it's a very uh, rewarding thing to clean off the pattern this way. Next thing, I want to come into the smoothing plane and smooth out the box, all the joints, anything that's sticking up, any glue that is seeping out. Clean it off, give a nice smooth edge all the way around on all the surfaces. Um, a finely set up smoothing plane will do this very, very quickly. And then I'm going to come through and chamfer the top and sides and pretty much all the corners of the bottom of the box except for the bottom edges of the box. On the four main corners of the box, I'm going to put a very heavy chamfer. And this chamfer is going to go all the way down until it meets the glue line. Uh, that'll help hide the glue line and also adds a bit of a, an aesthetic pleasing thing to the, the corners of the box. Then I'm going to hit it with some 360 sandpaper, smooth off all the edges. I'm just getting rid of the burrs, anything that your fingers feel, making it feel nice and smooth, and then we can go on to the finish. And for this, I'm using boiled linseed oil and paste wax. I, I know a lot of people uh, wish I would use other finishes as well, but the way that the boiled linseed oil brings out the color in this white oak is just... It's not something I can easily pass up on. It's it's such a, a quick and easy finish to put on, and the color on it is just beautiful. Once you let it sit for a few minutes, then you can come back in with a rag, clean off all the excess. I'll do three or four coats, and then apply paste wax later on. I do have videos on that. 
But uh, that was about it for the uh, the video crew being here. And so we shot, shot some pictures, and I thought that would be the end. And uh, I really like how the box came out. I was very happy with it, but it was just kind of bland, and it needed something more. So after Luke left, um, I came back in and added some more patterns and decided to actually do a carving, wrapping all the way around with my logo on the front and back. Really didn't take that much more time once I found the pattern I wanted. Then I could apply it to the box and, uh, and go to town carving again. Um, once you've done it on one side, you can go on the other. It probably took me about uh, what, 45 minutes or so to, uh, to carve all the way around this box and the, uh, the logo on the front. Just, again, following the lines. The only thing that was particularly difficult on this was uh, because I'm wrapping around the end, wood, uh, with the wood grain changes on me. So you just have to be careful to cut with the wood grain. And when you wrap the corner, you'll be at one angle on one surface, and then you hit the 45-degree uh, chamfer, and you ch change the chisel angle and carve around. Uh, carving circles is actually kind of difficult because uh, the eye picks up um, in, imperfections in a circle very easily. But as long as you follow the exact same line, I'm just using the edge of the white of the circle to guide me around, it comes out fairly well. For the lettering, I'm just going to hit these little tittles or whatever those things are on the tops of the letters and then carve them out. Um, basically the exact same thing I did before, except for rather than following a line, I'm just going to go deeper on some lines and narrow on others so you can see the, the rest. Then we scrape it off just as before. And then we'll get the chance to finish it again. Yay, I get another chance to use boiled linseed oil. <laughs> I'll put another, uh, what, two or three coats on this and then finish it up with paste wax, and uh, that'll about do it. Uh, I'm glad I went back and carved the sides. I think it just added a slight bit more finish to it. Took a little bit more time, but uh, well worth it. Not half bad from going firewood to box. Happy day. So there you have it. Uh, I'm really happy with how this came out. I, what do I have a little box for? I don't know. What do you need a little box for? But I am gonna, I'm going to keep it. <laughs> so this has been a, a really uh, a fun one to do. If you'd like to see uh, Luke Milkey's channel, I'll leave a link to it down below, Fusion Videos. Um, and he'll probably be uh, doing a few other videos. Um, he'll be taking some of this footage and using it for teaching how to shoot video footage. Um, and on his channel, he actually does uh, several videos on... What do you do for uh, for shooting video, um, more or less on the, the larger scale of a production? And uh, there's some really good information, so definitely go check that out. So I, I had a lot of fun with this, and I hope you did as well. I do want to say thank you to the patrons on Patreon. You guys are the reason why this channel is here. If you'd like to find out about that and help out with Patreon, you can do so right down there. Also, if you'd like to subscribe, you can do that as well. The like and shares are fantastic. And you can check out Luke's channel right up here. That's about it for today. Until next time, have a wonderful day.